In this exercise, we're going to use this equation here to calculate the solar elevation angle for two different dates, January 29th and June 21st, 2012, for a series of latitudes. So in order to do that, we're going to set up an Excel workbook here to uh, do all the calculations for us. So the first thing we want to put in here is the latitude range we're going to use. So let's just go ahead and create a cell called latitude. That's going to start with the equator, then up to 10 degrees, then to 23.5 degrees. From there, we're going to jump up to 40 degrees, 50, 66.5, 80 degrees, and finally 90. And the days we're going to do these calculations for are January 29th, 2012, and also June 21st, 2012. So the goal is to use this equation to solve for the solar elevation angle at these latitudes on these days. Now, when you look at the equations that we have set up here at the bottom, you can see there's a lot of variables in which we're going to have to calculate, uh, or we're going to have to use to calculate the uh, solar elevation angle. So since a lot of these variables are constant, let's go ahead and set up a constants table so we don't have to continually type in the same numbers over and over again as we uh, work through these equations. So I'm going to come over here and call this, this cell up here constants. And beneath it, I'm going to start to label out the constants we're going to have to use. Let's start first with the, uh, with the latitude. Well, latitude's already over here, so I don't have to copy that one down. Solar declination angle, we're going to talk about that one in just a few minutes. So the next one I'm after here is longitude. We're going to label longitude lambda E. And below that, we have this constant called C. So you can see C right here. Below that, we have TD. And below that, we have TUTC. Now, that's all the variables in this first list, but the ones that I skipped over here, latitude, again, that's given in this column, and the solar declination angle, delta S. Well, delta S will be different depending on the day of year, which is what the bottom half of this uh, problem suggests. So what we're going to do is we're going to step down here. We're going to write down a delta S for January 29th. We're going to also, uh, in a few moments, write down a delta S for June uh, 21st. But before we do that, we can see that the variables that are included here include the tilt of the Earth. That would be this variable right here, which is uh, going to be 23.5. We can see here the Julian day, which is D, which for January 29th will be 29. That's the 29th day of the year. We have DY. That tells us how many days are in the year, so that's going to be 365. We also have dr, which is going to be the Julian day of the summer solstice, which will be 173. Uh, so now let's go down and calculate delta S uh, for June 21st. All right, we're going to also going to have the tilt here again, and that's going to be 23.5. The d will now be 173. Whoops. Uh, the D will be 173, because it will be the summer solstice on that day. Uh, the DY, again, will be 365. And the DR will be 173. Now, something you should know right away about Excel. First of all, what I just did was I placed my mouse here in between columns A and B. And you can see that it takes on the shape of these double arrows, one pointing left and right. When that happens, if you double click there, it will automatically size the uh, your column here to fit your largest, um, largest cell. So there's going to be one last thing we've got to add to this. And this is a very important note about Microsoft Excel. It's going to try to do all of its calculations in, in radians. And you can see here that we've already put in some variables in degrees, like the tilt is 23.5 degrees. We're going to solve for uh, the solar uh, deck. I'm sorry, the solar elevation angle, which is going to be in in degrees. So we want to convert everything to radians. So I'm going to go ahead and make a cell for that. Now you can see that I've already gone over my sides again. So I'm going to come up here and double click on that. And the the constant we're going to use, in which we can multiply any angle by to get it to radians, will be uh, pi divided by 180. So to put that calculation there, I'm at this equal sign. I'm going to put pi. That's how you write pi in Microsoft Excel. Capital P, capital I, open and close two parentheses, and then divide that by 180 degrees. Should be about 0 0.017. So that constant, which we just put down here at the bottom, will be needed. Uh, we'll need to multiply uh, any angle by to make sure that we're in degrees. Okay. Something else needs. Since all of these are constants, I can drag a box 
uh, from uh, column A to B like this and click on the word merge to have constants now take over both of those two uh, columns. So let's go ahead and start to put some things in here that we know. First of all, uh, lambda E is longitude. As I told you in the problem, we're at 88 west. We're going to put that in there. C is 360 degrees. So I'm just going to throw in C just like that. TD. Uh, TD is going to be 24 hours, as it says there. And TUTC, as I gave you in the problem, is always going to be 18 in this case. So now we've filled in all of our constants. The first thing we're going to have to go after calculating here is this delta S for January 29th. Now I can see here in my equation down here in the bottom right that delta S is equal to the tilt multiplied by the cosine of C times D minus DR over DY. So watch how I enter this into this box so that we can uh, calculate delta sub S for uh, January 29th. So here we go. First equals tilt. I just go down and click on cell B8. So just right here, click on that. I'm going to multiply that. So I'm just going to hit the asterisk here times the cosine. So I go ahead and type in COS. I'm going to go ahead and open and close the parentheses that I'm going to eventually put data within. So once I get inside here, I see that I have um, uh, to divide C times D minus DR by DY. So I'm going to put that on top. And to do that, I'm going to open and close two other, or another set of parentheses. Within that, I'm going to put in C, oops, sorry, C, which is 360, which is up here. So I just click on that cell. Do times, open a parenthesis, D, which is 29. So I just click on 29, minus DY, which is 365. And I'm going to close that up. I'm going to divide this by, I guess before I do that, let me come back out there and remove that divided by. I'm going to get on the other side of that parenthesis. Oh, I'm sorry, come back in here. Getting on the other side of that parenthesis, hit divided by, and then make sure that I throw down there my D, Y at the bottom. Now, if you've been paying close attention, you can see that I already made a mistake. Notice how I accidentally clicked on DY when I should have clicked on DR. I can come up here and make the adjustment because all I need to do is change the 10 to an 11 and the 11 to a 10. So we've got that fixed. Now, given what I've gotten here, I've opened, two I've opened three parentheses, one, two, and three and I've closed one, two, and three. And if I hit enter, it should go and do the calculation for me. The only thing that you have to understand is while this is gonna be very close to the real answer, it is not the real answer for delta sub S for January 29th. And the reason why is because I'm doing this calculation in using degrees when Excel thinks I'm using radians. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna multiply everything that I just did inside of these parentheses times my constant, which is down here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right in here at the beginning, and I'm going to multiply this by this value. So I'm going to click here, and click on times, and now when I do this, it's giving me the correct negative 18.52 as the delta sub s for January 29th. Now you can do the exact same thing down here for delta sub s for June, but why don't we first go ahead and try to calculate the solar elevation angle for January 29th at zero degrees latitude. Now this is going to get quite complicated. There's going to be quite a lot of opening and closing of parentheses and also converting to radians because every single time you take a sine or a cosine, you have to convert what's inside to radians.